Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. Today I'm going to talk about uh, Bristol Blue Glass and um, yeah, the question that springs to mind is um, why is it blue and uh, why is it Bristol? So um, the reason why it's blue is um, because they add a bit of sprinkling of cobalt into the um, into the glass mix and um yeah and sometimes people call it cobalt blue as well but yeah that's um but bristol blue it is and um and the reason why it's bristol blue is because at the end of the 18th century early 19th century there was a glass maker in bristol called jacob isaacs and um yeah he was the first english glass maker to put his name on his glass so um and it kind of like everybody calls it Bristol Blue now because it says Isaac Jacobs or it says I Jacobs Bristol written underneath. Um, he used to gild his works and it was always in gold. So, yeah, so everybody calls it that. I think for a long time, probably people, a lot of people thought it all came from Bristol because he put his name on some of it, but it doesn't. Um, uh, and so what I'm going to do, I have a piece of his work yeah i've been collecting a long time and sometimes the odd museum piece passes before your eyes um at a total bargain price and you just like yeah shaking hand clutches it and whisks it away from whoever's selling it and um so yeah that's how i've acquired that and um yeah i'm, I'm happy with that because it's like the kind of thing that you see in museums um and yeah, so I'm going to show you that. I'm also going to show you a couple of other pieces. I'll show you how the gilding wears as well. And um, I'll show you something that's not from Bristol um, and also something that's not blue. And um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy this. Uh, I hope it'll be a little bit of learning for you. Um, yes, I'm showing you some of my favorite bits that I've that I've acquired over the years so um, yep so we'll get on with the video eh? so here we are looky looky my favorite pieces so yeah this is a finger bowl it's um, circa 1800 most people say this is stuff is circa 1800 might be a bit earlier might be a few years later and um, yeah as soon as I saw this key pattern I knew what I thought it would be you never know but um, yeah, when you turn it over, you got it the right way up. There you go. This is what you're looking for. This is what all the museums are looking for. Yeah, a proper bit, properly signed. Um, you can even read what it says. It's not so faint that it's all washed out. Um, you can see the wear on the edges here. If you hold a piece of glass like this up to the light you can see it's full of cracks it's uh, crap there's bits and bubbles and stuff in it um, and um, yeah in fact you can just can you see a little mark just that's just a bit of rubbish in the glass look there's another one there yeah I can rub my my thumb across it just sticking out on the surface um, there's Look at that there. Yeah, this is old glass. This is what you see when you look at old glass. Um, there's some more bits of stuff on it on the surface. Bits of crap that's actually inside the glass that's stuck and then on the surface. So yeah, um, this is not a modern piece of glass. The gilt is in pretty good condition considering this is the kind of gilt, um, this is not, this is actually gold that's been put on the surface. Um, it's not the kind where they were doing it later, where it was gold crushed in glass and fired into the surface. This is fired on, but yeah, it's just um, gilding, really. It's not, uh, as I said, um, gold crushed in crushed up in a paste with glass and then fired into the surface so that it doesn't come off. Um, that's a much later process. 
Um, so you can see it's got a little bit of wear and tear in places, but it's actually pretty good. Um, I will show you a couple of decanters that I have, uh, and you can see how bad um, this kind of gilding can be, or some of it's non-existent, but I'll, it'll give you an idea of how, how good the condition of this is. So, um, with that said, I'm going to show you a quick reference for this, and um, we'll, we'll, I'll show you some a couple of other bits and pieces. So the book I'm showing you here is The History of Glass by uh, Dan Klein and Lloyd Ward. And um, yeah, this is a terrible book. If you're a collector, it is a terrible book because it's just full of museum pieces that you're so unlikely to find. But if you collect for long enough, you may get lucky. So some of these books are quite good because obviously I got lucky. You recognise this key pattern here. Um, and yeah, he tells you down here. Gilder Isaac Jacobs often used Greek key pan and a stag's head suit. Blah, 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 I don't remember on his work. And as on, on this signed blue tinted dish, diameter 18 centimeters. So, yeah. So, anyway, there's your my reference that I'm going to show you for that that thing. He's they're not showing most picture people don't show you the signature. I think there's, there's one other book I couldn't find it that's got the signature on it, uh, so I know it's right. Um, but anyway, there you go. It is, this is, I said, this is a book full of museum pieces. And um, yeah, so that's, in my book, that makes it officially a museum piece. And the fact that it's so so clear and also so well signed. So there we go. Bristol Blue by Isaac Jacobs. And um, yeah, um, there's no such thing as Bristol Green. I'll show you what people sometimes call Bristol Green. But let me show you something. Um... That's a bit more worn. I have in front of me a couple of, um, well, they're a pair actually, um, but they would have been originally a, a triplet, triple, I don't know what you'd say. Anyway, they would have originally been three, um, but this is a pair of decanters. Um, that would have been a set of three. And um, yeah, so these are Bristol Blue. They're tapered ones. They're from the late um, 18th century. Um, yeah, and look at the state of the gilding on these. Yeah, so a lot of the uh, Bristol blue glass that you see um, from this period is gilded because the idea of having it blue, but yeah, look at the state of it. This is very kind of 18th century style, this late 18th century um, patterning and the stopper. But even then, the, from you can see that it's picked up like this, picked up, pick, 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 and the R is starting to wear off. Is it on both sides? Oh no, it's got a little thing. But even that's worn off a bit. And um, yeah, so but even this little motif here, that's 18th century. So um, yeah, and this is how they end up. There would have been another one. Um, you can see, if you if you look here, you can just see a ghost of the gilding. Can you see it there? So, but what you can see there is really the, the glue that would have been burned into the surface. But the gold is actually gone. This one's got Hollands written on it. That's um, what they used to call gin when it, from when it was originally imported imported from Holland. And um, and then it became very popular here. I'll show you the state of the base of the decanter. You can see masses of wear. You can see a little bit of the remains of the broken pontal. Um, show you the, the stopper. How it's rough fitted. And, yeah. So it's all good for being a nice period piece. You can see the edge here would have been gilt too. There's just a little tiny bit of it left. And again, where you where you touch it all the time to pick it up, it's worn off. And you can see exactly the same stopper, so you can see that they were originally a set. Um, and I said it would have been a set of three, and they would have been in a stand. But I'm just trying to show you, that's what happened. If you see gilding and it's doing this, 
then you're really talking it's probably um no later than the sort of like 1780s or 1880s or something like that. it's earlier than that and it could be a hundred years earlier than that um but yeah so if you see if you're wearing out like that if it's from the uk that is um that's an indication that it's a an early piece so i'm just showing you um early 19th century piece here um, and this would have also been in a set and it would have been on a stand um, probably too early for a tantalus and um, yeah see this, although the gilding on here is still in decent condition see, um, on the top it's in better because that's because you're picking it up like this B for brandy um, but around here it's a bit more worn on the corners and then if you look at the bottom Look at the wear on there. So there's a chip there. But yeah, you kind of expect that because it's got sharp edges. And um, yeah, if you run, if you see a sharp edge like this, and you do this, can you hear? Every sharp edge, it's got little tiny chips on it. You can run your finger down it and, and hear them. And you can see this would have been originally blown into a mould and then um, the surface is polished. You can just see where the mould is just not quite, the gloss is just not quite pressed out to the edge, to the surface of the mould in a few places. A um, bit there you can see. But yeah, so that's a, so some people label this as Bristol Green. It's not, it's just green. And um, yeah, so I will now show you something else. So this is a piece um, from the 1760s, um, gilded by uh, James Giles um, in London, in Southwark. And um, yeah, colour-wise, you would say this is Bristol Blue. However, we know that um, James Giles was buying blue blanks like this from um, Whitefriars which at that time was based in Fleet Street in London so um, so yeah so this was probably because um, he may have bought it from elsewhere but it was probably um, blown on Fleet Street in London so you're calling it Bristol Blue but there's nothing to stop you from um, sticking your, co your cobalt on a car and taking it to London or for the boat to even come into London with the cobalt so that they can make it into blue glass so um, yeah I'm just kind of like trying to show you that Bristol Blue is just a name um, as well as you know yeah it's from some of it is from Bristol but it, it's it's the name of the color this dark blue color Just to make your life difficult, um, they're still making Bristol Blue Glass. Um, in fact, we started in 1988 here. And um, yeah, if you look down here, I'm looking at the drinkware. And yeah, they're making panels of it. And I do see it appear on eBay quite often. Um, even the decanters. Um, yep. Yeah. And and even some of the patterns that they've got here, they're patterns that they did make that are no longer here anymore. So yeah, things are moving with this. It's not a sitting target. So you can't go in here and expect to see everything that you that you might find. Um, but yeah, you know, it shows that the, the legacy of um, Isaac J. Puds is still going over 200 years later. So that, that's quite a good memorial for him. And, um, so I think that's all I've got to show you here. So there you go. It's still being made today um, in Bristol um, by that company. Um, I will put a link to the website in the description below. I'll also give you um, the name of the book in the description below as well. And um, yeah, I don't have really much to say. Those are my favorite bits of glass or amongst my favorite bits because yeah, 
got so much. But, um, and I don't know if I've pointed about it before, but this is nowhere near all of it. Um, but I think I'm going to wind up now and um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And um, please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you. Good night.